Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy Sunday. It is June the 5th, 2022, day 127 of year four, reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets, another four-year consecutive day count, day 1,145. Today, we're picking up in Owaspi on page 179. And if we get some time today, we'll go ahead and move into the meditation book and pick back up where we left off at the other day on page 174. All right, y'all. So let's get started. All right. Taylor J. That's Babu. Auntie. Grand Rising. Father, we at it again. Thank you for another day. Thank you for a sweet and a peaceful sleep. Totally refreshed. Continuing our search for truth early in the a.m. Okay, y'all, chapter 13, page 120. Oh, hold on. Mm -mm. 179. Okay. All right, y'all. Chapter 13. Then Frankapati sent swift messengers to Moru, relating all that had been accomplished, giving also the names of the generals and captains over the newly established colonies redeemed from Uzza in the Asuan Mountains so that they might be registered in the libraries of Horatio. So remember yesterday, um, we got the rest of the story about, um, what's his face? Hoel, right? Remember the one that said, let them shift for themselves. Right, okay. Trina, hey girl, hey, Audrey, shalom. All right. And Fragapati established a line of messengers betwixt the colonies and also from the colonies to Moru, and then selected and appointed the messengers to hold office during dawn. And when the affairs of this region of the lower heavens were completed and in working order, Fragapati was ready to ascend with the mad and dumb Druhas rescued from hell. Accordingly, the proper persons fell to work and carried them into the avalanza being obliged to blindfold them because of the light. Nor did the Druhas cease wailing and crying with fear and pain and craziness. But because of the multitude of infants, Fragapati had previously provided 500,000 women of fetal that the infants might be redeemed to everlasting life. 60,000 physicians had Fragapati aboard and they fell to work right and left resuscitating and restoring to consciousness the unfortunates. And of the host of Hoab, not one was there, but went to work willingly as a nurse and helper. So remember all them, them shiftless, perfected souls that weren't doing anything in, um, was it Zo, Zoredho, right? We perfect. So we just, we just going to be him, be perfect and just look at each other and, and just like comment on each other's perfectness. Them, they got to work, all of them. 60,000 physicians had Fragapati aboard and they fell to work right and left, resuscitating and restoring to consciousness the unfortunates. And of the hosts of Hoab, not one was there, but went to work willingly as nurse and helper. Now struck up the Isinars with music, 30,000 of them, but soft and gentle as a breath of wind, carrying the tones around about the ship, even as an endless echo calling and answering from all possible directions, a continuous and enrapturing change as if near and as if far off, so that the uninformed knew not whence the music came, nor how it was produced. All these things were set to working order just as the great Avalanza was ready to start. Then Fragapati went into the ship, being almost the last one to enter. Already was the light gathering bright and dense about him, his head almost hid in the brilliancy of the halo. And then he called out, arise, arise in Jehovah's name, upward, arise. And as he spake, behold, the avalanza moved with his will for all the hosts joined in the same expression. And presently 
started upward the great fire ship, leaving the burning walls and signal centers flickering below. So they even hell overthrown, shone with great grandeur. Tiffany, take it high. Fragger Patty spake to Hoab, saying, When I took thee and thy host from Zeredho, I promised to take thee to Moru, the capital city of Horatia, my kingdom. Now thou desirest me to go with these Druhas to Zeredho? I will ask thee now. Thinkest thou that thou couldst plan their salvation and restore them to light? To which Hoab replied, saying, I perceive that of myself I can do nothing but go downhill, or at best keep on a level road. As I now comprehend all light, there is no one thing in all the universe that can rise of itself, but by the external pressure of other things, all tend downward, even man. To attain to be one with Jehovah is the beginning of the resurrection of the individual, but he who hath attained power to resurrect others is strong indeed. There are many who spasmodically resurrect others, but alas, how few can keep them resurrected. Not only must he have light of Jehovah within himself, but power to make others obtain the light for themselves. Alas, I am weak. Fragapati said, understand thyself, O Hoab. Be not deceived, nor short in faith to accomplish, for herein lieth the key to all wisdom and power. Suffer not thyself to go to the other extreme, saying man of himself can accomplish nothing. To teach a child this, he is to hew off its legs and arms. To teach it that it can accomplish is to make it giant-like and effective. That's good. Hoab said, I perceive thy wisdom, O chief. How then shall we find a line by which we can train this economy? If we inspire them not with faith to accomplish, they will accomplish nothing. If we teach them they are dependent on Jehovah for all things, and that Jehovah doeth all things, and that no man can change his own destiny, then he is moved as a machine. Then we will make non-entities of our people. On the other hand, if we inspire them that they can accomplish, it will grow upon them. And finally, they will believe that. Hold on. And finally, they will believe that they do all and Jehovah nothing. This was the mire my other kingdom ran into. Then spake Fragapati, saying, Thou perceivest that reason cannot solve the matter. Let us then suspend the subject, and I will take thee to Moru and her kingdoms, and we may obtain facts more pertinent than opinion or reason. Chapter 14. Upward, Alicia, yeah. Hey, girl, hey. Upward rose the avalanza with its contrasting assemblage of the souls of light and with the souls of darkness, the Druhas, the holy Isinars chanting anthems of praise and thanksgiving whilst the Druhas were engaged in or cursing everything in heaven or earth or in weeping and moaning or in stupor dull as if dead. Fragapati had previously sent swift messengers to Athraba and the holy council of Moru where he had descended the light of Jehovah whose voice came upon them saying, Lo, my hosts come in the avalanza. Prepare ye to inhabit them, 30 million. Choose ye from my Ethereans and my atmospherians who shall receive the hosts of the avalanza, the 900 million in darkness. Go ye therefore to the borders of the sea. Shewan, near the crossroads, Selu, where I have created the plains of Hu et Sigam, ample for their resurrection. And ye shall provide them houses and hospitals and nurseries suitable for them to dwell in, being ready when the avalanche cometh to deliver them. Zoe, that's why, boo, that's why, boo. At the Rava, and the Holy Council had responded to this, and the swift messengers in turn had informed Fragapati of the place prepared. Accordingly, 
the Avalanza was landed in Huet Sagam, where the 30 million were waiting to receive them, disciplined by Aridata, goddess of Zeh, and Ethera, first of the seven Ayatas in Gom. And they had 10,000 trumpeters besides other players, 4,200. And after 4,200, it's reference number 17. And at the bottom of the top, it says 4,200. All subsequent similar changes are not footnoted. See editor's note number three. Okay, so at the top, they remove the and, but down in the footnote, and is italicized and bolded. So that was the only change. Okay, verse five. Ari, I'm sorry, R.D. Atta had provided the pastures in green and in red and brown, but the green she had laid near Chiwan, where the avalanza would land. Hence, it was called Hootsigam, signifying green for newborn. Consequently, the Druhas were delivered from the avalanza on an open green plain, neither dark nor light, suited to the diseased in mind. Fragapati knew Ardiata for her former kingdom in Ethera lay in one of his own provinces, and it was easy for him to commune with her at a distance and without messengers. So even before the avalanza landed, he said unto her, I will cast the Druhas on the green fields, and as fast as thou can, and as fast as thou and thy host can resuscitate them to consciousness, they shall be selected and carried into the houses and nurseries thou hast provided for them. Thus was the avalanche discharge of the Druhas for the present in Horatio to receive treatment prior to being carried to Zaredho, and Ardiata and her host took charge of them although more than 4 million of, of Hoab's hosts also remained with them as volunteers to assist in the redemption. Then Fragapati directed the ship to be steered for Moru, whither it arrived in due season, and there were in waiting to receive him more than 1,000 million souls, and they had provided musicians 1 million, 1 million playing, I'm sorry, one million players and singers, so that far and near it was like a sea of music. When Hoab looked upon the beauty and magnificence of the scene, and especially the discipline, his soul was filled with thanks to the great spirit, so that he was scarce to speak, um, so that he could, I'm sorry, so that he could scarce speak. And when he mastered himself a little, he said, O chief Fragapati, how could one so exalted as thou art come to me in Zaredho? Every hour I am rebuked by myself because of my former vanity. Fragapati said, to learn not to speak of one's self, nor to think of one's self, whether praised or rebuked, is this not the right road to Jehovah? Hoab said, it is true. Therefore, the opposite is going on the wrong road. Chapter 15. When the avalanza was made fast and the host came forth, many of the Zared Hoans, fearing the brilliancy of the likes of Moru, were permitted to go and dwell a little way off. But the others, led by Fragapati and Hoab, entered the capital city and came before the throne of Jehovah, greeted by, Athra by Athrava and the Holy Council. Athrava said, in the name of Jehovah, O chief, greeting, and to thee, O Hoab, come ye and honor the throne of Moru. Fragapati said, greeting to thee, Athrava, and to ye, most holy council, in the name of our father. Don't that sound so much better, greetings in the name of our Father, instead of greetings in the name of the first, fifth Baptist church with all the brethren and long and tow and giving most honor and high praise to Sister Shemitah and her brethren. Don't that sound so much better? You cut from the foolishness. If you love the Father, then greetings in the name of the Father, in the name of Yah. 
or in the name of Jehovah, or in the name of Great Spirit, right? Mom, shalom. Forgive me, y'all, if y'all do that. There was no slight against you, but sometimes you just take 40 minutes to do your greeting. I'm just like, we're here again, Father. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Verse 3. Fragger Patty said, Greeting to thee, Athavra, and to ye, most holy council, in the name of our Father. Hoab said, Greeting in Jehovah's name. And then Fragger Patty and Hoab went forward and ascended the throne and sat on the left hand of Athavra. At once, the light from the ethereal worlds began to fall upon the throne and even upon the whole council, and the light was golden yellow and the most sacred color and brilliant. Hoab had never seen such before and was overwhelmed with fear and delight, but many of his hosts were obliged to hide their faces. Presently, the light condensed over the throne, even whilst 3,000 million looked on till the very sun stood above Fragapati's head. And then came the voice of the almighty Jehovah. Out of the midst of the light, Jehovah said, hear the words of thy creator, O man, who created the corporal and the Essene worlds. Behold the works of my hands. Who can find a place where I have not created? Think not that I cannot create a voice and words, for it is, for it for is this not easier than to create a man who shall create words? Behold, my corporal sons amidst my corporal star worlds. Behold, my ethereal sons amidst my Essene worlds. I made corporal darkness and I made corporal light. I made spiritual darkness and I made spiritual light, but I am the light of light. And I am the word of words. Might be in our title today. I don't know. We'll see. As the wisdom of man invented the words, so doth the light of my light come in words to them that can bear my light. Behold my wisdom, O man, in creating souls out of the substance of corporal darkness. And after darkness, it has reference letter C, and that is all the way back on two, page 236. Corporal darkness here simply means corporal bodies because the souls of mortals are thus protected against the too powerful light of Jehovah. It is on this same account that infants and young people at death have their spirit Hold on, let me read that again. It is on this same account that infants and young people at death have their spirit period in the dark or lower heavens until they become strong enough to endure the light. The greatest of all misfortune is, therefore, to die young, especially in infancy. Let me read that again. The greatest of all misfortune is, therefore, to die young, especially in infancy, but mothers who have suffered such a painful loss may take comfort in the fact that all children, including those in infancy, are never lost and they receive special loving care appropriate for the innocent. 1882, lowest edition. Mm, let's go. Okay, so the, look, so the more I'm reading through this, y'all. Hold on, let me go. Let me see something. Um, my 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 thoughts about um my thoughts about like reincarnation is being shaken up a little bit. Hold on, and what that really means because it doesn't seem like I don't I don't I don't quite understand it yet. But I thought it was a. Uh, It doesn't say it here in the um I like the table of contents, but I know it's I'm not sure we're gonna to get to it. As we keep reading, we'll come back across it. First, second, and third resurrections. Yeah, it what I'm reading here clashes. 
like the last couple of days, I'm like, wait a minute though. I'm like, okay, uh, I'm still trying to figure it out. All right, but it, yeah. Okay, we're just gonna keep going. But yeah, that um, just just thinking about that, it's like, hmm. Okay, yeah. So we might have to revisit that thought again, unless well, clearly I'm still missing information. So it's still on the table, but it's it's been at the forefront of my mind trying to put all this together. Okay, verse nine. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, I read verse nine again. As the wisdom of man inventeth words, so doth the light of my light come in words to them that can bear my light. Behold my wisdom, O man, in creating souls out of the substance of corporal darkness. Thus can their souls hear me and not be afraid. But to them who become pure souls, I come openly. Read it again. Thus... Uh, Behold my wisdom, O man, in creating souls out of the substance of corporal darkness. Thus can their souls hear me and not be afraid. But to them who become pure souls, I come openly. Their throne becometh my throne. Their voice becometh my voice. Their hosts look upon my throne, and my light shineth before my people. Hear then thy creator, O Zoretho. Thy people called to me in their darkness, but I came not. Thy hand was upon them. Thou hast said unto them, Behold my wide countries, my mountains and valleys, my bright rivers and refreshing winds. Come ye, they are yours to keep forever. And because thy hand was upon them, they were beset with the darkness, and they could not find their way out. Neither beheld they more the glory of my kingdoms. Ooh, that's good. Look, let me read that again, y'all. This is what it said. This said, I'm going to sum it up real quick. The people of this red hole, the perfect people sitting around in their perfectness. Jeez, shalom, shalom. He said, when they called out to Yah or called out to Jehovah, the great spirit in their times of darkness, that they couldn't, couldn't even hear him because of their current ruler had told them that this is all that there is, right? So he said, even if I wanted to, I couldn't answer them because this is what, hold on, hold on. he said, because your master's hand was upon you. That's why you couldn't hear me, the great creator. So I'm being honest. So people don't think I'm crazy. Yoga is the best thing I ever did, bro. Do yoga and then get the meditation right after. Yo, that is something different, bro. I don't know what it is. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your input. Okay. Back to verse 11. It said, Hear then thy creator, O Zaredho. Thy people called to me in their darkness, but I came not. Thy hand was upon them. Thou hast said unto them, Behold, my wide countries, my mountains and valleys, my bright rivers and refreshing winds, come ye, they are yours to keep forever. And because thy hand was upon them, they were beset with darkness, and they could find and they could not find their way out, neither beheld they more the glory of my kingdoms. Yea, thou wert as a wanton going after my chosen, and thy voice luredest them away from me. But I spoke in nirvana, high above in my thrones of light. And my sons and daughters heard my voice. I said unto them, lo, the red star and her heavens are fallen in darkness. Go ye to them and deliver them into a new resurrection. Had I not spoken in the ancient days, saying, inasmuch as ye raise up them that are beneath you, so will I send them who are above down to you to raise you up also. Oh, that's good. So they pretty much said, if you don't, you ain't helping them ones below you to at least get to the level you are because you can't raise them higher than you. If you're not helping those to come up to your level, we ain't sending nobody to help you come up a level, right? That's good. Listen, I'm going to read it again, verse 13. But I spoke in Nirvana high above in my thrones of light. And my sons and daughters heard my voice. I said unto them, Lo, the red star, remember the red star is earth. The red star and her heavens are fallen into, in darkness. 
Go ye to them and deliver them into a new resurrection. Had I not spoken in the ancient days, saying, Inasmuch as ye raise up them that are beneath you, so will I send them who are above you, who are above down to you to raise you up also. But they forgot my words. Neither strove they more to raise up them that were in the hells below. And I said unto my Nirvanians, Go ye to Zaredho, for she hath enticed my holy ones away from me. And ye shall give them a parable of compensation openly, and they shall come before my light and hear my voice. For ye shall take them to hell and cause them to deliver the Druhas through the light of my countenance. And therefore ye shall bring them to Moru, that I may speak with them face to face. Hear the commandments of your creator, O ye sons and daughters of Zaredho, for that which I give unto ye, for that which I give unto ye shall be inviolate. Inviolate. In, yeah, inviolate. Yeah, you shouldn't violate them, right? Which is that ye shall have dominion over the earth and her heavens for 200 years, commencing at the close of this dawn of Dan. And thou, O Hoab, shall be God over all the rest, and thou shalt be anointed with power to raise up successors with power and wisdom. Be wise, O my children, and profit ye in the wisdom of my Ethereum host, while yet the dawn of Dan remaineth. The voice ceased. Then spake Athavra, saying, In thy name, O Jehovah, do I suspend myself from thy throne till it be the will of Fragapati and thy will also. And he rose up and stood aside. Then Fragapati went and sat in the midst of the throne. Fragapati said, I proclaim three days recreation to the holy council and to the city of Moru. Behold, my people shall mingle together as brothers and sisters, rejoicing in the light of the Father. Be ye joyful, singing and dancing. The ascent to Jehovah's kingdom may be likened unto a ladder with steps, and not even. Uh, the ascent to Jehovah's kingdoms may be likened unto a ladder with steps, and not an even plain. And ye shall call this first step in the resurrection of the earth's heavens in this dawn. The host then mingled together, greeting and rejoicing, for the Zeredhoians had long desired to see the Ethereans now dwelling in Moru, and the Ethereans were equally desirous of seeing the atmospherians. Consequently, there was great rejoicing and merriment. All right, we had 28 minutes. Let me see how long this chapter is. We'll read the next chapter, and then we're definitely going to go to the meditation book. Okay. Chapter 16. When the time of recreation was ended, Fragapati ascended the throne of Jehovah and signaled to the marshals to proclaim order and labor, and at once the vast multitude took their places, and in the same instance, the Isinars discoursed music with anthems, the which, when finished, was the signal for business heavenly. Fragapati said, Again am I about to depart, and again to leave the god of Moru, Athabra, with you. And Hoab and such of his hosts as I may choose shall go with me. For according to the rank and glory of gods, I must now deliver Hopacha, or Hopaka, Hopacha. Hapacha and his kingdom of Ipsioji raised up from Guatama. Hello, snap. They were talking about the, they about to come to America. Coming to America. Okay. For according to the rank and glory of gods, I must now deliver Hapacha and his kingdom of Ipsioji raised up from Guatama. Therefore, Fragapati descended to the foot of the throne and sat down, and Athavra, god of dawn of Moru, came down and took him by the hand in ancient manner and said, Behold, thou hast honored my throne, and the time of my departure is upon thee. Arise then, O God, and go thy way. And Fragapati rose up and stood aside and signaled for Hoab to go 
and be raised up in the same manner, the which he did, becoming wise in the behavior of God towards toward one another. The marshals had filed 50,000 attendants besides 10,000 Essenars, and at a signal from Fragapati, March 4th, out of the capital, followed by the host of Hoab and 100,000 Ethereans. And when they were once beyond the lights of Moru, behold, some of the hosts of Hoab rejoiced because they were better pleased to be where there was less light. Yet there were 700 million of them who rejoiced not, but rather loved the light more. Then Fragapati said, it is well that not all are of one mind. The 700 million who love the light more shall be my traveling companions to Ipso Ipsioji, because they are strong in light. I have work for them. But the others shall be taken back to Zarejo, where I will also come in due time. And after they are settled in Zarejo, behold, I will send a God to them, and they shall found a new kingdom in Jehovah's name. Let all hands, therefore, enter the Avalanza following me. At once the host entered the ship, and Fragapati gave the word to be all, and they sped forth direct for Zarejo, led by swift messengers who well knew the nearest route and the light and the lightest places. And the route taken was through the sea of Fuwicha. Fuwicha. Yeah, through the sea of Fuwicha, the Oram of Haiti. And the route was taken through the Sea of Fuwicha and the Oram of Haiti. Hardly had they gotten underway when the light of the upper heavens began to descend on Hoab, whose excitement from the wondrous scenes made him pro what is it? Propitious. Okay. Okay, start again. Hardly had they gotten underway when the when the light of the upper heavens began to descend on Hoab, whose excitement from the wondrous scenes made him propitious to the change and feeling the buoyancy of the light, he thus held forth saying, how could I forget thee, O Jehovah, or thy purposes observe and deny thy designs? How saw I not that at my quickening in my mother's womb, I was the farthest from thee, and yet even then thy breath was upon me. Whew, this is so beautiful. And when thou hadst fashioned me and badest me walk upright, thou didst send thy angels to me, saying, Behold, thy creator liveth. Life of his life thou art. Flesh of his flesh created he thee, and he gave thee thyself in proof of himself. In the earth, was I conceived, housed up in darkness, of thyself built up, nor was I of myself anything under the sun. And thou createst the honeybee, and made him speak to me for my own benefit. He said, Behold me, O man, I am a worker. In a community, I live with my brothers and sisters. I shut my eyes to things sour and bitter, and I store my house with sweet provender only. Oh, my God. God, <laughs> listen to this and read this again. Look. Okay. Listen to this. Huh. In the earth was I conceived, housed up in darkness of thyself built up, nor was I of myself anything under the sun. And thou createst the honeybee and bade him to speak to me for my own benefit. He said, behold me, O man, I am a worker. In a community, I live with my brothers and sisters. I shut my eyes to things sour and bitter, and I store my house with sweet provender only. Soul of man, hear me. I am the voice of thy creator. Behold the harmony of mine house and the provision I make for my newborn. So quick fun story. So we were out at uh, Jamestown, the Yorktown Foundation the other day. The day that, well, Facebook probably see it. The day that I posted that video about that huge snake that ran across our path. 
<laughs> while we was coming out of the foundation. But anyway, there they have a lot of um a lot. Of, it's a it's a historic site. Let you know what happened in Jamestown and all this stuff, right? So, but back there towards the back, sucks. when you what you say it sucks. We were going out there. We went out there to do a quote for a project that they want us to do from their administration offices. Um, but my husband hates it out there because it does give you a lot of history about slavery and everything. And they even have the exhibit set up. Now, back in the day, I used to work out there, and this is my no first. Shame. <laughs> so, no shame. I, I was said, a look. I always said I gotta get my wife out of here. <laughs> look. So this was like for a little little stint after I had got out of the military. And before I started working as a government contractor, I went to work out at Jamestown because I'm a history buff. And, you know, I just love stuff like that. Plus, I got to be the cop while I was out there. Right. But I was a good cop. I didn't get a gun. <laughs> I didn't have a gun. But nevertheless, I really enjoyed it, even though it was like minimal pay. Look, I get out of the military and then I go work out there. Look, working out there for eight dollars an hour, right? Hey, but hey, I, me, look, about when you said do the military count? <laughs> yeah, because I, I inquired about the pay. Like, oh, I just got the military. Well, you offered me a job for eight dollars, but the history piece was so overwhelmingly exciting for me that that did not matter to me. I wanted the history. I wanted the knowledge that they had there. It mattered to our bills, you know. (laughs) So while I was out there, in about two weeks' time, they was like, oh, you can change your uniform and we're going to make you like a chief, right? So I got to change one day. I came home. I was like, babe, look, I got a brown uniform like military because it come out of the Navy and the chiefs, their working uniform is the cat. Because I was like, look, they made me a chief out here in Jamestown, babe. (laughs) And guess what? They increased my pay by $2. Now I'm making $10 an hour. My husband looking at me like, I was like, I know, I know. This this ain't going to help our bills. But the point is, I get free information and history and stuff out here. But, boy, it was some hot days during that summer. Wearing that hat with them khakis and stuff. I'm like, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? But anyway, I really enjoyed it out there. My husband hates anything slavery. It's like, why we got to live in the past? We don't need to keep reliving that. We know there was a time that was. We not there now. We keep moving on. We don't want to live in this whole attitude. What was me and we can't do anything. All that we're doing is because of what we're doing now. We're putting our hands to the plow. We're working. We're building up. We're not trying to live in slavery. I keep repeating it. So he absolutely hates it out there, right? But they wanted us to do a project out there. So we went out there to quote. And while he was walking around, and we actually took Bella with us. So me and Bella was going through the exhibits. But I said all that to say, I noticed from the last time I've been out there with the evolution of information and them actually getting on track with um, actual peoples who were here in this land, they've actually changed it from the lighter fairer or like Caucasian people that they had out there are the fairer skinned Indians and they replaced them with the real people who were native to this land right and they got little tiny afros beady beads to their head I was like yo they didn't put I was like babe they didn't put black people in these exhibits they 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 like I was like yo somebody else is in charge <laughs> I said, they put the right people in these exhibits. He's like, I don't want to hear about that. I was like, I know, but they're getting history right. They're fixing it, right? So I'm still super excited about it. I want to go back and finish going through all of them. But he was like, no, I'm not. We're just not. But I'm a history buff. I love the history. And it it, it makes my heart smile to see that they're actually correcting the information. Okay, babe, thanks. (laughs) That I sacrifice myself for you, but it 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 it's amazing that they're getting the history or they they're correcting the wrongs, right? And they're letting you know, yeah, the people that was here, they really look like you today, right? I was like, yo, this is amazing, right? Okay, so but they had nothing to do with the reading. The whole point of me telling you this was about the honeybee back there towards the back before you get to the outside um, uh, displays and stuff. They have this little gift shop, and it's called the Honey Bee, right? But right outside the Honey Bee gift shop, there is this uh, um, this flat screen, like long, long flat screen that they mounted on the wall, and it's lit up, and it, it gives you all the information about the Honey Bee. So when you walk past, it's like it's a real live Honey Bee uh, hive on the screen, it's touch screen. 
So when you touch it, you hear the sounds of the honeybees and you actually see it's like this animation of a real live beehive and everything, right? And so me and Bella was going through and she was clicking it. And so I, I, I learned some things about the honeybee and the hive, right? Just in a few minutes of clicking, I was like, oh, I never knew that. So it tells you about how the queen is made. And most of the workers, they said there are three kinds of, of honeybees. You got the queen, you got the worker, and you got the drone, right? The queen, of course, is female, and all the workers, believe it or not, are females. All the worker bees are females. The only male worker bees are the drones, and it's only a few of them in a whole hive. And they let the males kind of stay there for just a short period of time, but towards the summer months, or was it the summer? Yeah, they let them stay there like in the fall and winter and stuff, but towards the spring and summer, they kick all the drones out. And those drones are actually being raised up within that hive to mate with other queens outside of its own hive. So the drones who are here would not mate with the queen that lives in their colony. They're allowed to stay there till they're strong enough to where they can go out to other uh beehives and mate with that queen there and they began to reproduce right so i thought i was like oh that's interesting so and they got this whole little history on honeybees but that's why i even brought that up okay let me just go back but they don't even have the honeybee in the bible and proverbs it talks about the wisdom of the ant you know the the um the hyrax the, the the lizard the gecko can be found in king's palaces all the stuff they never mention anything about the honeybee what? Okay, what was it called? It was just a just a bee? Uh -uh. I mean, a bee has always been a bee, but I'm just saying I don't ever remember reading anything about a bee in the Bible, in Proverbs or Psalms. Or, but this this wisdom is like it come from Proverbs, like when it talks about the ant, right? Okay. Let me read this. Okay. Verse 13. In the earth I was conceived, housed up in darkness, of thyself built up, nor was I of myself anything under the sun. And thou createst the honeybee and bade him speak to me for my own benefit. He said, behold me, O man, I am a worker in a community. I live with my brothers and sisters. I shut my eyes to things sour and bitter and I store my house with sweet provender only. Soul of man, hear me. I am the voice of thy creator. Behold the harmony of my house and the, and the provision I make for my newborn. So it's like, study me, the honeybee, and learn wisdom, oh foolish man, right? Learn about how your creator created us to live in communities and how we work with one another, right? I shut my eyes to all things sour and treacherous, and we only focus on the sweet, right? Oh, this is beautiful. And thou createst the ant and bade him speak to me for my own benefit. He said, behold me, O man, I am a worker in a community. I live with my brothers and sisters. Soul of man, hear me. I am the voice of thy creator. Behold the industry of mine house and the burdens we bear jointly into our stores. And thou created the spider and bade him speak to me. Babe, listen, we run into all these things over the last couple of days, right? Look, in that, the, the last house we looked at yesterday, well, first of all, the gopher house <laughs> <laughs> was full of spiders everywhere. Like, where is the opening to where all these spiders? It's like the spiders live inside the house. The gophers run the outside. Like, they keep the maintenance on the grounds. The spiders, we got the inside, G. <laughs> so the gopher house had the spiders. Look, the last house we looked at yesterday, we're going to call it the, the police house, but the cops live next door. <laughs> Inside their shed was a honeycomb. Did you go in there and look? No. Bella pointed it out because she ran over there and snatched it over. She said, oh, bees are everywhere. And there was a beehive inside of the shed and some of the honeycomb had dropped on the floor. And me and Diane went over there and looked. I was like, oh, yeah, we're going to close this back up. Right, this 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 is amazing. <clears throat> we be running into all kind of stuff. We be, <clears throat> we read about it, then we experience it in real life. It it, it, it look it blows my mind. <laughs> okay, verse sixteen. 
and thou created the spider and bade him speak to me. He said, behold me, O man, I am one with thy creator. By the spirit of things I move and the geometrical figures of the unseen worlds, I build mine house. Think not that I reason or take lessons. I move by the spirit within me and it moveth in concert with the spirit of things without. Hear me, spirit of man. There are two ways to knowledge before thee. One is by the soul of things and one by reason. Ugh. Ooh, this is so good. <laughs> okay. So after, think not that I reason or take lessons. After lessons, you have um, reference number 18. And down at the bottom of the top portion, it says, or take lessons from other spiders. I take no lessons. <laughs> this is amazing. Look, he said, I move by the spirit within me, right? And I, everything is in my house is based on the geometrical figures that you're going to find in nature. Ain't nobody teach me that. I don't take lessons from other spiders. I move by the spirit of my creator who resides on the inside of me. Bruh, this is so good. <laughs> okay, look. And thou created the spider and bade him speak to me. He said, behold me, O man, I am one with thy creator. By the spirit of things, I move. By the geometrical figures of the unseen worlds, I build mine house. Think not that I reason or take lessons. I move by the spirit within me and it moveth in concert with the spirit of things without. Hear me, spirit of man. There are two ways to knowledge before thee. One is by the soul of things and one by reason. And thou heldst up before my eyes continually that the unseen ruled over the seen. Then I became vain before thee, O Jehovah. I said, when I am dead and born a spirit, then I will see the unseen and cannot err more. But lo, my folly in thy sight. When I was raised in spirit, I saw the spirit of things. But alas, the soul lay still beyond. And to me, the soul was now the unseen cause or ruler over the spirit. Again, thy holy ones came from, came from the Ethereum worlds, speaking to me, saying, and yet beyond the soul cometh nirvana. Now have I beholden thy crystal spheres and thy matchless glories. Yea, I look into this sea of Fuacha, whither I had often gazed before, seeing nothing then, but now beholden ships laden with gods and goddesses from thy Nirvanian fields and higher works and worlds moving. And after Nirvanian fields, after fields, it has a reference a letter D. And on page 236, D says, let's move this. Hold on. I'm gonna start using one of these bookmarks. I use this for this particular portion of the book, so I can just flip right to it. Sometime I get it, sometime I be off. Okay. D says, <clears throat> those who have had substantial experience in spirit communion are often surprised to learn that less developed spirits, especially the least developed Essenes, frequently cannot see the more mature or advanced spirits who may be standing in their immediate vicinity if they can see anything at all. That's, let me read that again. Listen. Those who have had substantial experience in communion, in spirit communion, are often surprised to learn that less developed spirits, especially the least developed Essenes, frequently cannot see the more mature or advanced spirits who may be standing in their immediate vicinity if they can see anything at all. Sometimes those who are newborn in spirit cannot even see immediate relatives who are, through experience, more advanced in spiritual grade. Once these Essenes begin to advance spiritually, <clears throat> they are surprised to suddenly see and hear a loved one appear 
who had actually been standing beside them all the time, but had been unable to make their presence known. Similarly, it seems that spiritual grade also affects the ability of those who reside in the realms below from perceiving from perceiving higher atmospheric or ethereal realms for the same reason. Okay. All right, verse 21, back on page 186. And thy fire stirreth me to the soul to expand to the mastery of these atmospheric heavens. Oh, that I could vent the hallowed glory thou hast bestowed upon me. Oh, that I could thank thee for the happiness I have because, hold on. Oh, that I could thank thee for the happiness I have because thou createst me. Oh, that I could open up the souls of men to behold thy wondrous works and the majesty of becoming one with thee, thou almighty Jehovah. Oh, that they would hear me and believe. Oh, that they would not turn away from light. Oh, that they could learn to glorify thee every day for the little light and little joy they receive. How, like gods and goddesses, they would they become in thy kingdoms. But they harbor discontent. They discourse on the little they have received from thee. Like the canker worm that groweth to devour, they feed their sorrows by recounting them over and over. For pain they cry out, and for disappointment they weep. Yea, they feed their own darkness with darkness, and in the end forget thee, thou all light. Mm, wow. Think about people who go down a downward spiral. All they can think about or all they choose to think about is just how bad things have gotten for them. It's going from bad to worse, right? And they're recounting their sorrows over and over till in the end they get to the point like, what's the point of it all? Does God even exist? Does he even hear my cry, right? Like that that's a real thing. Hoab ceased, but gazed at the coursing ships in the atmosphere in heavens, whereupon Fragapati said, Behold thy wisdom, O Jehovah, whom thou wouldest make strong. Thou hast made to feel adversities sting for the emergencies that lie ahead. Thy plan is thy gods to run near the cliffs whereupon millions perish. Who can attain to know thy wisdom, O Jehovah? Who can comprehend the millions of thy sons and daughters? And after millions of, it has reference number 19 and down at the bottom of the top. It says the millions of millions of thy sons and daughters. It just has a. Oh, OK. So the previous version added an extra millions in it. So the previous version in the reference number 19 said the millions of millions of thy sons and daughters. And here at the top, it just has one millions. Who can comprehend the millions of thy sons and daughters? And yet thou knowest everyone and carriest them by a breath. So gently they feel thee not, nor know thee. To a very hair's breath thou takest them. And in the time of desperation, thy hand cometh to the rescue of the righteous. Man said, now will I fortify myself with riches and houses and all manner of possessions. Adversity shall not come upon me. I have more faith in my possessions than in Jehovah. Mine is a kingdom I can see, but Jehovah is afar off. But thou art suffering him in his vanity to go away from thee for a season. Sooner or later, thou bringest him in with a short turn, either on earth or in heaven. And he goeth down as an example to hundreds and to thousands that envied him. Thou hast set up the poor man in faith. He toileth day and night. He is weary and sore. He crieth out with hunger. His rags are ashamed to him, but he remembereth thee, O Jehovah. In thy praise, he singeth a song in his soul every day. To do good unto others is his great delight. And thy hand reacheth down to him in time after. His soul is like a giant. Thou hast planned him for a very God in heaven. The spark of faith that was in him he nurtured, and it became as mighty as a tree that fell not down before the blast. The good he received, 
he exalted. <clears throat> and it fructified and grew as a harvest and rich soil, and he stood mighty in all places. And thy praise are his songs, and they endure forever. His psalms are the voice of thy love, and the multitude of thy people remember him, whilst all else are cut down and destroyed. Thy work hath a sure foundation. Thy wisdom standeth before man's wisdom. Not one hath found a failure in thy word, as it speaketh to his own soul. Thy labor is from the subtle and unseen. Thy footstool, the cause of causes. But the vain man looketh to thy, but the vain man looketh to thy object. He turneth thy ways upside down, and he maketh the cart to push the horse. Yeah, we've been kind of talking about that, making the cart push the horse, or your flesh pushing your spirit when your spirit should be driving your flesh, right? If your flesh is driving your spirit, you are upside down. You are wrong. You need to stop your right side up and let the spirit connected to y'all drive the flesh and let it be a vehicle for righteousness here. Right. We almost done. We got one more verse. I'm going to read verse 33 again. So we got two verses. Thy labor is from the subtle and unseen. Thy footstool, the cause of causes. But the vain man looketh to thy object. He turneth thy ways upside down. He maketh the cart to push the horse. And thou sufferest him to drink to the field of his own vanity. And when he runneth himself into torments, thou findest, thou findest a way to reach him and bring him home to thee. Great is his glory when he findeth thee. His voice becometh the love of thy loves forever. For thou hadst shaped him as an example and given him scope to run his extreme for his own glory. Yea, thou hast planned him for one of thy great workers that would not go down afterward. And that, my beautiful people, is the end of chapter 16. This was absolutely amazing today. Like, we write at 57 minutes. Like, I know I said we would uh, read the meditation book on page 174, but we like right at the hour mark. Let me look at it real quick and see if I can read like one page. I'm going to see. I might just end it right here. I'm, I'm going to see how I feel in a second. Let me write the page. Okay. 174. We pause that last. Let me see. Let me see if I can read something in two minutes. I don't know. <clears throat> oh, meditation is medicine. Hmm. I could. This probably take me five minutes. Okay, why not? I'm going to just read this section. Meditation is medicine. It's a page and a half, right? It'll still be shorter than yesterday. Okay, page 174 of the meditation book. Meditation as medicine for peace, health, and spiritual enlightenment. Quote, feed the Ba with what endures. End quote. Ancient Egyptian proverb. Ba is the body, right? The Ba, the Ka is the spirit, the Ba is the flesh. Many people in modern society have learned to look toward modern science for healing. Also, many people rely not only on man-made drugs, but also on herbs and natural extracts for promoting health. It must be clearly understood that physical health is a product of mental health. Read that again. That'll preach. That'll teach. It must be clearly understood that physical health is a product of mental health. The diseases of the body, including cancer and the common cold, are caused by a person's karmic basis or the thoughts, feelings, sentiments, anxieties, and worries of their unconscious mind, which they have accumulated over thousands of lifetimes. This is because over a period of time, which may include several lifetimes, a person has intensified the feeling of negativity and these have restricted or blocked the flow of spiritual energy, which comes from the soul, ba, and then passes into the mental plane and then to the physical. Thus, mental illness arises when negativity is intensified in the mind. 
Each form of negativity distorts a human being's spiritual energy, and this distortion leads to mental and physical disease. Negative feelings and emotions block and distort spiritual energy, while positive, harmonious thoughts and emotions promote the harmonious flow of spiritual energy throughout the mind and body. Therefore, those people who experience more stress, anger, hatred, tension, worry, and anxiety will experience more illness. So it is important to promote mental health first and foremost. Insanity is in reality more common than people realize. Most people have come to believe that giving vent to emotions and allowing anger to be expressed is a healthy way of living. Indeed, emotions such as anger can cause dire effects when suppressed, but the answer is not to allow it free expression whenever one is at a boiling point. This philosophy has developed as a way for modern society to cope with the increased stress and tension of modern society. Instead of realizing that this stress is unnatural and undesirable, psychologists and other leaders of society seek to rationalize it and accept it as a normal factor of human life. From a yogic perspective, Extremes of emotions are signs of severe ignorance and mental dullness, right? And today they're calling it mental illness, which is, it's not really mental illness, not to, you know, not even getting into that. Somebody might try and come cancel my channel if I say people ain't having mental illness. <laughs> trying to tell you what the root of the problem is. From a yogic perspective, extremes of emotions are signs of severe ignorance and mental dullness. Extremes of emotion and ignorance lead to a degraded state of human experience. Examples of this are people who express anger, hatred, and greed towards others in a more degraded state. These people will do violence against others. In an even more degraded state, these people will be una unable to sustain the normal realities of life and will be homeless or need to be institutionalized. Mental health degenerates the more a person engages in negativity, which draws the mind down to the dull state. The ideal of a personality who has integrated all aspects, emotional, intellectual, action, and will should be kept in view. Such a personality will not be affected by the curses of others, nor by inner anxieties and fears. This is the ideal which we have been promoting throughout this volume. It is attainable by anyone who sincerely applies themselves to the teachings and practice of yoga. Therefore, one should try to rise above anger, hatred, greed, fear, anxiety, etc., through the teachings of yoga presented in this volume. So the problems of human experience can be alleviated and even eradicated through the perfection of yoga practice. This means that as you cleanse your heart and become more mentally lucid, pure, and harmonious, you will be clearing up mental complexes and in turn, you will be promoting physical health. Reflect on the following. You say that you want peace and harmony in the world, and yet you cannot maintain peace in your own life. Do you engage in extremes of emotion? Do you express anger and hatred towards others? Do you eat meat, a product of the violent killing of animals and other negative substances which deteriorate your physical and mental state? Do you show contempt for others and refuse to acknowledge your kinship to them? Do you engage in racism or sexism? Do you engage in gossiping or practice? I'm sorry. Do you engage in gossiping or participate in forms of entertainment which agitate the mind, such as violent shows or degen or denigrate? I'm sorry, denigrate. Let me read it again. I think it's denigrate. Do you engage in gossiping or participate in forms of entertainment? which agitate the mind, 
such as violent shows or denigrate others like pornography or political propaganda? Do you turn away from people when they are trying to tell you something about yourself in order to help you? In order to experience true peace and harmony, you must promote purity in your life at all levels. You cannot simply talk about it and not try to practice it. And we um, this is the last paragraph, and then this is it for the day. Yeah, it is, ain't it? The idea that a human being is supposed to grow senile and feeble as he or she is old is backed up by the ignorance and the distracted and dull lifestyles. If you have lived properly, taking care to reduce anxiety and practicing the art of harmonious living, you will increase in wisdom, mental clarity, and spiritual awareness even as the body deteriorates as you approach the time of death. Therefore, the meditative lifestyle should be promoted in society as a means for improving mental and physical health, harmony in society and spiritual evolution for all. Meditation is the best medicine to reduce stress, anxiety, restlessness, and dullness, and to increase inner peace, harmony, and spiritual awareness. Therefore, you can substitute the mental and physical dependencies on drugs, parties, and other addictions for what that for what truly endures and brings abiding happiness and bliss. Meditation is the path which allows you to not simply release tension, but also to overcome and transcend all that is negative, base, and painful in life. Thus, anger, hatred, greed, ignorance, vanity, jealousy, covetousness, lust, longings, urges, cravings, and all forms of tension and stress are to be considered as mental diseases. These diseases of the mind keep the mind at a low state in dullness. Such a human being leads himself or herself to negative experiences. Meditation and the meditative lifestyle are the preferred treatment to eradicate all ills. And that, my beautiful people, was pretty good. And that is the end of our reading for today. So that was a page and a half. Very good, baby girl. Yay. We ready for the day. All right, y'all. That, that's it for today. That's it. And we finished. It's an hour and eight minutes. So it took me what? It took me 10 minutes to read that. So, yay. Happy Sunday, everybody. It is June the 5th, 2022, day 127 of year four, reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets. Another four year consecutive day count. It is day 1145. We read pages 179 through 187 in the OWASP and pages 174 to 175 in the meditation book. All right, so that's it for today. Y'all go ahead and get out of here. Enjoy the rest of y'all y'all weekend. Spend it with family. If you need to rest and just recuperate from the week, still, if you ain't get enough rest today, just rest the day too, right? If it's time to go party with family and friends a little bit, some good, clean, wholesome fun, go do that too, whatever is your day. But we're going to get out here and get out your hair. And we'll see you back here tomorrow morning, bright and early at 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And may y'all bless you in all that you do today. And may you continue to walk the paths of righteousness and live a wholesome, peaceful life, right? And may you be balanced in all that you do. All right. Love y'all. Peace. All right. Bye. <laughs> no, no, no. Come on. You can just do that. Go ahead. Oh, girl, you need some Carmex. Come on. Go ahead. In that, girl. I got some. Kimball Mac. Mm -mm. We signing out. How to catch the replay. Mm -mm. Go ahead. Girl, look, put your lips out. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I have lipstick over here. Okay. Yeah, you should have put it on for you came around here. <laughs>